So in getting ready for the quiz, I thought I'd offer you four more practice problems that you can solve, and then I'll solve them with you. So the first one is this practice problem. A snail is traveling one meter per hour and speeds up to seven meters per hour in two hours. What is its acceleration? So stop your uh, recording and try this problem, and then I'll solve it for you. All right. So hopefully you had a chance to solve the problem. And again, the key idea is that you want to make sure you do all the parts. We'll start off with a picture. And I have here my snail. And it is, at this point, traveling one meter per hour. And then after two hours, a little time maybe of two hours, it seems to be traveling faster to seven meters per hour. So that's our first step. The next step is our givens. This, remember, is the key part to all of this. So I like to always underline the numbers once I get my test or have any sort of problem and know that every one of those underlined numbers has to represent something. So I look here and I see, okay, one meter per hour. I always know meter per hour without that square is my velocity. So I have a velocity over here. And here I have another meter per hour, so that's a velocity. And then two hours, that is a unit of time, okay? And in fact, it seems like the time it took uh, from the final to uh, the initial time was two hours. So in fact, I can write TF minus TI. Some of you I know are just writing T, uh, just T, and that's perfectly fine too. So now I need to figure out between these two, which one is my initial velocity and which one is my final, because they have to either be initial or final. So the snail is traveling one meter per hour. So it looks like this is what it started off with. I write that as my initial, and this here I write as my final. Okay, because that's where it ends up. So let me record down what I have. So I know that VI is one meter per hour. And I know that VF was my final velocity. That is seven meters per hour. And I also have T value. In fact, I'll write it as TF minus TI. Because I can assume that my hours initially were zero this is going to be two hours, okay? It's perfectly fine to just write T as well. Like I said, I know many of you are doing that. So the next part is, is my unknown. My unknown is acceleration. I'm looking for A, so I'll put a question mark. So then I have my formula. So how does this work? So for my formula, I know that A equals VF minus VI over TF minus TI. Okay, so let's just plug in numbers. So I see right over here that VF is seven meters per hour minus my VI is one meter per hour. And this all takes place, so my TF, TI, all is one number in a two hour period. Okay, if I do my math, that tells me that my acceleration is three meters per hour. Okay, so it's traveling three meters for every hour. So explanation, I would write my snail is traveling three meters, excuse me, it should be squared, thank you. My, um, my snail is traveling three meters faster each hour. Okay, again, my snail is uh, traveling three meters faster each hour. Okay, so let's go to the next one. We'll go for this one. A horse starts its race from the starting gate at rest. She accelerates 10 meters per second squared for 13 seconds. How fast will she be going? So stop your video and try that problem yourself and let's see if we come up with the same answer. All right, so for this question, uh, again, we identify what we have. So here are a couple key words, at rest. So as soon as I see at rest, I know it's talking about a velocity, all right? And that velocity is zero meters per second. 
She accelerates. Ooh, that key word tells me that this number is acceleration. That's my A value. It also helps because I know it has this square, so that's acceleration as well. And then it says for 13 seconds. So seconds I know is a T value. All right, so now let's take a look at this one. Um, my V value here, is this a starting uh, speed or is it the ending speed? And it's the, it says the horse starts at rest. So this is my initial speed. What is it now that I'm going to be looking for? So let's, I'm not going to worry you about uh, drawing a horse that's racing. Let's start with the givens. So for my given, I know I have VI being zero meters per second. A is 10 meters per second squared. And T looks like it is 13 seconds. And I'm just going to keep it as t for right now because we know that it's t final minus t initial. You can do either one. Okay. They both equal uh, 13 seconds. Okay, now my unknown, what I'm trying to find is my final velocity. I'm looking for tf, that's my unknown. So let me give, get the equation again. The equation that I want to use in this one, I have acceleration, I have VI, I have T and VF. I think the best acceleration that uses most of the variables is my VF minus VI over TF minus TI. So now I just plug in my numbers. I know A is 10 meters per second squared. I am looking for VF, so I keep that as my unknown. VI is zero meters per second squared, uh, just zero meters per second, and all of this takes place in 13 seconds. So if I do my calculations on my calculator, I times 13 by uh, 10, and that should get me to be 130 meters per second, which is incredibly fast. Um, and probably very unrealistic, because I think even a car can't do that. So that means that she ends uh, with traveling 130 meters per second, this, this racehorse. It must have some jet engines attached to it to get that fast. Okay, there's our answer. Okay, let's try the next one. There it is. Go ahead and stop the video and try it yourself. Okay, so for this one here, again, we're going to label what we have. This one's a little bit more interesting. You notice here that on your track in the lab, a car with the one centimeter flag. So one centimeter flag is something that gives me centimeters is distance. And remember, distance we're using as X, okay? And it travels through a photo gate uh, a in 0 0.02 seconds. So there is another value. This looks like it's time for me. And then photo gate B, it's traveling uh, at 0 0.04 seconds. So that's time. And it looks like it has two seconds that it's going to be traveling between the gate. What is the car's acceleration? So this one I definitely feel like I want to draw out because it's a little confusing to have all these times. So here's my photo gate. A. Here's my photo gate B. I know that it took two seconds to get between these here. From here to here, it took two seconds. Um, put my S there. I also know that the time it took for one centimeter to pass from here to here, from there to there, here's my one centimeter, was this time. So for my car, here's my car. And remember, it has this one piece that's sticking up that's one centimeter long. It took that many seconds to cover this entire centimeter. So that's an important piece of information. So let's see what I have. So that means to travel from this end to this end is my distance. Okay, that is my VF minus my, excuse me, my XF minus my XI is one centimeter. All right, so I can say, oh, this is zero centimeters to one centimeter, and that would have been perfectly fine. You would have gotten the same answer. All right, so that's this variable. 
And now for photogate A, I'll just write a little A for myself to remind me. Um, it took the time of 0 0.02 seconds. All right, so now I can think, hmm, I wonder how fast it's going. Remember in the lab we tried to figure out how fast that's going, so let's do that. So that means XF minus XI is um, TF minus TI. Both of these values, we can also just say distance over time because what I'm trying to do is see how fast it's going. I'm trying to find its velocity. All right, so in that case, I know that my distance, if I go back here, is one centimeter. And to travel one centimeter, it took 0 0.20 seconds. And that answer means that it is traveling 50 centimeters per second. And that is my velocity. So that's my starting velocity, VI. So I have one more piece of information. I know VI is 50 centimeters per second. How about the next piece of information? Over here at Photogate, I know that it looks like it's, again, traveling one centimeter. Same setup as I've done here, but this time it's taking 0 0.04 seconds. So if I do my math here, this works out to be 25 centimeters per second. Okay, so this here is my VF value, 25 centimeters per second. Okay, so now I have a VF and a VI. I'm also told that it's traveling two seconds. So now I have my time, two seconds. What is the acceleration? So I go, okay, I know acceleration is VF minus VI over T. So let's plug in the numbers. That means that that is 50 centimeters, excuse me. It is 25 centimeters minus 50 centimeters squared over two seconds. And if I do the calculations there, that should work out to be the value of 12 0.5 centimeters per second squared. All right, we'll try one more. For this one here, a girl is accelerating uh, 0 0.5 meters per second. Her initial speed was one meter per second. She ran five seconds. What is her final velocity? Again, stop your uh, video and let's see how close you can get to what I have. All right, next thing, again, label what we have. Here we have acceleration. Here it looks like we have a velocity. It even says initial speed, so I know that's initial velocity, and I have uh, five seconds. I know that's the value of time. So what's her final velocity? Let's label what we have. We have A being 0 0.5 meters per second squared. We have VI being one meter per second. I have T, which is five seconds. And if I do my formula, I know that uh, A equals VF minus VI. Just reminding myself again, VF is the value I want to find out over T. We can say that as TF minus TI. That's perfectly fine. And now we plug in our numbers. So we have A being 0, uh, 0.5 meters per second squared with VF minus 1MS meter per second over five seconds. And if I do my calculations for this one, it works out to be 3.5 meters per second. All right, best of luck in your studying.